Hello everybody. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about this sample project here called Stack Sites. This is a project for Android that's going to demonstrate how to parse a custom XML file and um, display that nicely into a list view. So the source code for this video you can find on github.com slash foamyguy slash stack sites. So go ahead and come here and uh, you can download a copy of this code. You can just use this zip download button right here if you don't have a Git client or if you do have a Git client obviously you can use this URL over here and check out a copy of this. Um, well, let's take a look at the description real quick. It's going to tell us what we're doing here. Basically we are going to take some XML data that looks like this. This is just something that I created so this is completely custom but obviously you could apply these same principles to some more well-known form of XML like RSS for instance. Uh, but in this example we're going to look at this completely custom XML and uh, this is basically some XML I created that represents a list of stack exchange sites so you can see our main item here our main tag is stack sites and that contains a list of site objects and inside each site it has a name a link an about and an image URL so we're going to create an Android app that takes all this data out of here and puts it into a nice pretty list view like this. So the image URL we're going to use to pull in, put inside an image view, use it like an icon over here. The name will show up here bold at the top of the row and then the about will show down here under the name and then uh, what will happen is when you click on that item in the list view it will go to the page that's represented by this URL right here from link. So. Um, Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into Eclipse and get started. So the first thing we need, um, anytime we're going to be parsing data like this, the, the first thing I always do is I come and make a data object class that will represent exactly what it is that I'm parsing out of there. So we just looked at the data, we got a name, link, about, an image URL, that's I just threw this data class together here, I called it stack site, and I include those fields, and then I just went ahead and generated some getters and setters for each of those. So that's the very first thing you need just so that we have a, a nice clean object to work with for the rest of the time here. So go ahead and create that. The next thing that we are gonna do is um, we're gonna get a downloader, um, and this is just basically a helper class that's got one single static method that will download a file for us. It basically this one method it takes a URL and a file output stream and then it just downloads whatever's at that URL to this file output stream. So this is pretty basic stuff here. Um, we'll run through it real quick just so you can see it if you if you never encountered this before. Um, basically we get a URL object, um, we're recording a start time, although in this example we're not actually going to do anything with the, with that other than log it, I think. Um, we get a URL connection, and then from that connection we get an input stream and a buffered input stream, and then we also are going to create a buffered output stream that points to this file output stream that we got as a parameter. So now we got an input stream coming from our URL and an output stream going to our file. So the only thing that's left is to loop through the data here and write um, chunks to the output stream from the input stream. So we do that while there's chunks left. We keep writing them over and over until we're done. And then uh, flush and close the output stream. Uh, it is very important. That's something that you can forget a lot of times is flush and close. If you don't do that, your file might get corrupted. So you got to remember uh, always to flush and close your output streams. Um, and that's the only thing going on in this downloader. So the next thing that we need, this is we're, we're going to use this downloader to download the XML file. So I've actually got this XML file pulled up. I just stored this on Dropbox, you can see here. Um, and it's just called stacksites.xml and then you know the rest of the Dropbox URL to get to it. So this is going to be the file we're downloading. We're going to download all of this XML and store it locally. Now the reason we're going to do that is because uh, we're going to set it up in such a way that if for some reason the internet is unavailable when we try to download this list, we're just going to use the copy that we got down, uh, last time. So that's why it's good to always download stuff like this and store it locally because then you never know next time the user comes back they may not have an internet connection and you can at least show them the data that you got last time. So that's what we're going to use the downloader for. We're going to be downloading that whole XML file. Um, the next thing we're going to look at here is this 
sites XML pull parser. So pull parser is um, something that is unique to Android as far as I know. I don't think there's a pull parser in regular Java, although there is something that's kind of similar. Um, but I think this specific one is, is actually unique to Android. So pull parser is actually the, the recommended parsing type on Android. There are a few others that you have the option to use. You can see um, in this project here, I've also got a DOM parser object. We're not going to go over that, but DOM parser is another type of parser you can use. Um, and then there's also SAX parsing, S-A-X. That's a, a, yet another type. I don't have an example of that in here, um, but I may add one at some point. So if you check back, maybe that'll maybe that'll show up. But pull parser is the recommended type, so that's going to be the one we talk about. This, uh, just like the download class was, this is just kind of a helper class that contains one static method that is going to parse our XML file and give us back a list of stack site objects. And remember, stack site is that data object that we made over here. So this is just kind of a helper method that will go to, go through it, do the parsing for us, and just give us back a, a nice uh, list that we can work with uh, inside of our adapter so we can show it inside of our list view. So let's break this down here. Uh, first thing we're going to do, obviously, we need to create a list that we can return. So we'll do that. Um, we need to create an, a stack site object that we can use. Um, we're going to use this over and over. So each time we get into a new tag or a new site tag, basically, we're going to be creating a new stack site object for each one of these sites inside of our XML. So we'll create that. And then the last thing we need is a string for cur text that will represent the current text as we're parsing. So whatever comes in between two tags is text. So like this is the text for an image URL. Um, this is the text for a name. Just that stuff that comes in between those two tags will be the text. And we're going to store that in this cur text string. So once we got all of those ready to go, we can jump in and actually start doing the parsing. So the first thing we need to do, get this pull parser factory and make a pull parser instance from that. And that's pretty straightforward. Just pull parser factory dot new instance and then um, factory dot new pull parser. That's all you got to do there. That will give you an instance of this XML pull parser object that we're going to use to parse our XML file. So the next thing we're going to do, get a file input stream that goes to our downloaded file. Um, when I downloaded the file, I called it stack sites. We'll see the downloading actually takes place from the main activity. Um, so I'll show you this a little bit later, how that file gets downloaded. I mean, you saw the downloader object that actually does it for us, but we make use of that downloader object inside main activity, and we'll show that just here in a few minutes. Um, but for now, let's just look at this pull parser, and we're going to create a file input stream, and uh, we use context.openfileinputstacksites.xml. So this open file input, that's saying we want to open a file that's stored inside of our internal storage. So that's where I downloaded it to with this app. Uh, the other option you have is you could download it to the external storage, uh, which in most devices is the SD card. Or if the device doesn't have an SD card, then there's some portion of the hard drive or um, storage rather that's partitioned out for external storage. But in this case, we're using the internal storage, which means it's actually saved inside the directory um, data slash data on the system, which means that unless the user's on a rooted device, they can't actually get access to that file unless it's through our app. So uh, context.open file input stack sites, we're going to do that, get our input stream, get a buffered reader from there. And then that buffered reader is what we're going to set as the input on our uh, XML pull parser object. So we call set input and we pass it that buffered reader. The next thing we need int event type. So this, uh, this XML pull parser works with these event types. It's basically going to represent um, what kind of event happened and then we're going to loop through all these events. Now the events represent different things that can happen within an XML uh, document. So you can see a couple examples here. There's in document. That's obviously an event that represents we parsed the whole document. Now we're done. Same as there's an in document. There's a start document, although we don't need to use it necessarily. Um, the, the most important tags that we are going to be using are uh, start tag, that's an event type that represents the start of an XML tag, which means this first one here. The text event, 
that represents inside of a tag. So that represents this portion right here. And then the end tag event, which represents the ending tag that has the slash in it, which is this one, whoops, right there. So we're gonna use those event types um, to pull out this data and we by looking at which tag it was, we know where to store it inside of our object. So basically we're gonna be looping through this whole document. We're gonna get a bunch of these events and we're gonna to react to them accordingly. So we get our first event type right here. And then after we got that, we're gonna start our main while loop. So basically we say while event type does not equal event end document. So we're basically going to keep looping until we get to the very end of our document. So this while loop will loop through the whole thing for us. So the first thing we want to do, uh, create a string and store the tag name in it. So that's going to be, you know, for whatever tag we're in, that's going to store. So if we're in the name tag, it's going to store name. If we're in the link tag, it's going to store link, link, so on and so forth. Um, so then we got a switch on event type. So this is basically we're saying, you know, what type of event did we get? Did we get a start tag, a text, or an end tag? So if we got a start tag, and if the tag name dot equals ignore case key site, which is actually I got these um, static variables up here just to make my code a little bit more clear to avoid hard coding these strings down below. So we got key site is just site, key name, you know, link about all these. I just made static uh, variables to, to work with those and make it a little bit cleaner in the code and these correspond to the uh, the names that I used inside these tags here so you can see we got site we got name link about an image so you gotta make sure those are the same as what you have inside your XML so inside start tag we say if we're in a start tag and if it is the site start tag then we want to create a new instance of our cur stack site object because that means we're starting a new site so we want to make a new one of these so that we can store all the data that that site contains in it. Um, the next tag we're going to look at is, or the next event rather, is text. So if we're inside of a text event, the only thing we're going to do is say cur text equals xpp dot get text. So basically that's just saying we're going to store this string um, that comes out of the text and we're gonna we're just gonna put it inside this string variable here and hold on to it and then we'll actually make use of this down below inside the end tag so the the next event and the last one that we need to mess with here is the end tag event which again that represents when we're done with the tag so like finish name here that will get an end tag event for that so on and so forth for link and about and all the rest of them so inside end tag, this is where most of the work is actually going to happen. We say, if we're in, if we're at the end of the site tag, what we want to do is say stack sites dot add curse stack site. So basically, if we're at the end of the site tag, that means we're done with one complete site here. And if we're done with that full one, what we want to do is just add our object to our list so we can return it back when we're done with the full document. Um, so that's what we do right here. We say if we're at the end of the site tag block, then we just add it to our array list. Uh, if we're at the end of the name, key name, then what we do is we say cur stack site dot set name equals cur text. And remember cur text we set back up here, so it's gonna be set to whatever values contained inside a name for us already. Then we just go through and do each of the different tags the same way. If it's key link, then we say set link cur text. If it's key about, we say set about cur text. And if it's key image URL, then we say set image URL to cur text. After that, we just got a break because we're done with this iteration of the loop. And then we say at the very end of our while statement here, you can see this is the end of our while statement, the last thing inside there is uh, event type equals xpp dot next so that's basically uh, what's you know increasing our event type or moving on to the next event type so that we can iterate through this whole document um, so after that the only thing we have to do is once we're done with the entire um, document then we just return the stack sites which is the list that we've been adding each of these stack site objects to as we go. So we return that back to the whoever called this method here. And that's the only thing uh, that this pull parser 
does and so it's pretty simple the interface that you use to do this stuff with and uh, I mean obviously we're working with my own custom XML here but you could see this would be pretty straightforward for you to take this pull parser and apply it to either you know some different XML that you have or some uh, more well-defined XML document like RSS or something like that that's already got uh, a definition so that's our pull parser the next thing that we need since we're going to be showing this stuff inside of a list view we need an adapter so I got mine I called it sites adapter here um, real quick before we get into the adapter I'm gonna jump over to the layouts actually so you can see activity main layout um, is just a list view so there's not a whole lot going on here because basically this app the only thing in it I'll jump back to the picture just for one second the only thing in it is just a big long list view so that's all we got there the more important layout here is actually row site so this is going to be a layout that represents one row in our list so um, this XML file will represent one of these rows so like right here this box that I'm drawing inside there each one of these rows will be represented by this row site XML file and our adapter is going to load the data and uh, and populate it into this row site XML so inside that row we got a progress bar um, which is kind of a deceiving name it's actually that circular indicator progress indicator we're gonna show that while we're fetching the image and then uh, once the image is completely fetched we're gonna switch we're gonna make that progress indicator invisible and then we're gonna show the image so that's actually these two things this progress bar and this image view are actually like uh, one on top of, the, of another inside this layout so progress bar the next thing we got is the image view that represents the icon so you know these pictures over here each one of these that's our image view the next thing we got is name text which is uh, at the top and it's you know to the right of icon image and 16 text size and bold and then we got an about text which is also to the right of the icon image but is also below the name text and is a little bit smaller text size so that's our layout for each row let's go ahead and jump back to the adapter here because the adapter is going to be what populates these um, views for us so it's a pretty straightforward adapter it extends array adapter um, which is real convenient because if you remember this XML pull parser thing this is returning a list of stack site objects to us which makes it real easy to interface with an array adapter so let's see what we got here we got an image loader we're gonna use that and this is image loader is actually part of a library it's part of this Android universal image loader library that you can find on github this guy Nostra 13 made this library for us um, I've talked about it in a few other videos so I'm not gonna go too in-depth with it um, but definitely check this thing out it's a really great library anytime you're dealing with images that you're pulling from online so we're gonna create an instance of that image loader we're also gonna create an options object so that we can set some options on our image loader and then uh, that's the only variables we need so we're gonna jump right into our constructor so we got public stack site or I'm sorry public sites adapter and we take a context we take a text view resource ID which we're not actually going to be using um, but this array adapter it forces us to take this parameter even though we're not going to use it uh, we do still have to allow it to be passed in and then um, in this particular constructor it's going to take a list of stack sites and we're going to call it sites for now um, and again that's this list is going to come straight from this XML pull parser so you can see kinda how these two things are going to work together um, just because this pull parser will return a list to us and this sites adapter will take that list uh, and you know populate the data into the views for us so that they can go into a, a list view so the only other thing we need to do um, and this is actually a overridden constructor this is a, a array adapter already has this constructor by default and we're overriding it basically because um, so, we got some other setup we need to do here so it will um, you know the the regular array adapter constructor will take this list for us and automatically add everything inside of the list to the adapter so we don't even have to do that it will do all that for us when we make this call to super here so the first thing we need to do inside of our version of the constructor we need to set up the image loader so we make a config 
and you know we say image loader .get instance and we say init config and then the other thing we're going to do is set up our options object so this image loader library it allows us to pass in some custom options and some of the options that we're going to take advantage of here are cache in memory and cache on disk now what this is going to do for us is when it downloads the images and again these images we're talking about these are the icons here so like each one of these is going to get downloaded from the web and it's going to use this image loader library to do that but because of this options it's going to cache those images in memory and it's going to cache them on disk which means the next time the user comes into the app as long as the image hasn't changed it's just going to use its locally cached copy instead of downloading a new one so it's real nice that this library takes care of that for us we don't have to worry about the logistics of how that works um, the only other thing we need inside of our adapter here is the most important part and that's the get view method we're going to override get view and basically this get view is where the magic of the adapter happens we got to override this and we got to make it populate our data into the view for us that represents each row so we create relative layout row and we're gonna set it to um, convert view convert view is something the system will pass back to us basically if some of the rows have scrolled off of the screen then it will give convert view back to us and that's gonna be a view that's no longer on the screen so we can uh, we can just reuse it instead of creating a new one every time so we set our row to convert view then we want to check if the row is null so this is saying basically if the row is null that means convert view is null and if convert view is null that means that there were no views that could be recycled so basically this means um, you know we want to recycle a view but we can't because there's not one for us to use so we have to create one so in order to create one we're going to use a layout inflator and we are going to inflate that r.layout.row site which is this XML back here that I showed you so if our convert view was, was null then we inflate a new one and if it's not null if we did get a recycled convert view then we aren't gonna do this inflator code because we have this if check here so if we got past a convert view we're just gonna use the one the recycled one that we got past instead of creating new one that's gonna help out our performance because we're not creating new views so the next thing we gotta do we're gonna get um, reference to the image view for our icon image we're gonna get a reference to name text and about text and the progress indicator so first thing we want to do after we get all those references and to do those we we gotta do row dot find view by ID um, to pull each one of those out and that's pretty similar to how you do it inside an activity I'm not gonna go too much into how that works it's pretty similar if you've been working with Android at all you probably have recognized that before so we get these references the first thing we're gonna do after that we're gonna say indicator dot set visibility visible and icon image dot set visibility invisible so basically we're gonna say we want to show the progress indicator and we want to hide the image um, and then we'll flop those two we'll make the indicator invisible and the image visible after the download um, has happened after we fetch that image and it's ready to show then we'll switch those two that's just so the user is not looking at you know blank white while the image is being fetched because it'll take it a second for it to fetch the image so we want to show them something to let them know that it's working the next thing we're gonna do set up a image loading listener and again this is part of that universal image loader library and we're, that's this image loading listener is gonna get a callback to on loading complete after it's done fetching the image basically so that's where we're gonna put the set we're gonna switch the visibilities we're gonna make the indicator invisible and we're make the image visible um, that's the only thing that our listener is going to do so then what we want to do is say image loader dot display image and we say get item and this is a, the adapter adapter dot get item position and position got passed to get view remember that's the first parameter that gets passed to get view so that's going to be like the index whatever row we're at in the list you know so zero one two three four etc so we say get item position that's going to return to us the stack site for this position so stack site has this method get image URL so we say get the current stack site for this row and then get the image URL from that and that's what we're passing to display image so we pass it the URL we pass it the icon image which is the image view we want to put the image into and then we pass it the options and remember the options is that thing we created back up here in the constructor which tells it we want to cache 
cache that image in memory and on disk. And then the last thing we pass it is our listener that's going to do the switch for us, switch the progress indicator in the image view once it's done. Um, so that's how we set up the image. The other two things that we have to set up are the uh, name text and the about text, and that's pretty easy. We just say name text dot set text get item position dot get name and about text dot set text get item position and get about and then we return the row so we return the full the view that represents the full row um, and that's the that's it for the get view so this is basically that's the whole adapter that's going to be the adapter that it will take the data for us and it will populate it into these rows um, populate the views and uh, it meshes together with the list view to show it real nice to the user. So that's our adapter. The last thing left is just our main activity where we handle all the rest of putting all this stuff on the screen. So inside main activity we got um, sites adapter, that's going to be the adapter we use, and a list view. So we say inside on create set content view activity main, that's our layout over here that has just our list view in it. We say sites list equals list view find view by ID sites list. So that's just getting a reference to our list view. Where you say we want to set an on item click listener. So that's basically this is going to get a callback anytime we click any row of the list. So this is where we're going to hook it up so that it will go to the website of the row that we clicked. So we say set on item click listener and then in on item click we say String URL equals imadapter dot get item position and then get link. That's going to be the link again that comes out of the XML here. Uh, so link right there is going to be where that gets populated from. And then we say intent i equals new intent action view i dot set data uri dot parse the URL and then start activity. That's going to start the default browser whatever it is on the device and open it up to that URL. Um, so then the only other thing we're going to do inside on create we're going to say uh, if the network is available so basically if this device is connected to the internet we want to download a copy of the XML and to do that we're going to start the sites download task which we'll get to in just a second just a little bit further down here um, if the internet is not available if is network available returns false that means we're not currently on the internet in that instance we're just gonna go ahead we're gonna try to create our adapter with the file that we had last time so that's that's where that um, that bit I was talking about earlier with downloading the XML file each time instead of just reading it live from the internet and not storing a copy of it this is the benefit we get from that if if we're not online then we can try to read the file that we got last time um, so we don't just have to show the user nothing um, but if we are online, that's where we're focused mainly, is if we are online, then we're going to say sites download task download is a new sites download task and then download that execute. So sites download task is an async task. That means this download is going to happen in the background. Um, and we define it right down here, private class sites download task. So in the do and background method, we say downloader dot download from URL and we pass it the URL to our XML file and then we say open file output stack sites dot xml and context mode private so open file output that's a method of activity that will open up a, a, a file output stream in our internal storage and it will give it the file name whatever we pass it here so we're going to pass it stack sites dot xml so downloader dot download from url and again this downloader that was the one of the first classes we looked at over here that will download the file for us that's the only thing we're going to do with get or I'm sorry with do in background. Then once we're done with the download inside on post execute what we want to do is take that downloaded file and build our adapter out of it and then set our adapter to our list view. So we say im adapter equals new sites adapter. We pass it a context main activity dot this. We're passing it negative one. That's that text view resource ID. Remember, we're not really using this, but we have to pass it a value. And then the last thing that we pass it is sites XML pull parser dot get stack sites from file. And remember, that's the that's the method inside this pull parser. It returns to us a list of stack sites. So that's what we're passing here. We're saying 
Uh, we downloaded the file, now go and get the stack side objects out of it, put them into a list for me, and then we're passing that list to the adapter constructor, which accepts it and will populate the items in the adapter from it. So once we get our adapter, all we have to do is say sites list dot set adapter m adapter, and then uh, then we're done. So that's it for main activity really. Um, you can look at this. I didn't talk about this is network available, but this is just a helper method. Basically, it uses connectivity manager to check to see whether or not the current device is uh, has an active connection to the internet. And in order for that to work, you do have to have this permission here access network state. Um, so you got to remember to add that permission and then the other permission we need is internet obviously because we're downloading the XML file and the images from the internet. So you can see you know we're downloading this whole XML file and then we're also going to be downloading these images that uh, are also stored on Dropbox or the internet anywhere. I mean in this case they're stored on Dropbox but obviously if you got an RSS feed they'll be stored on that site or, or stored somewhere for you and you got to download them so you need the internet permission. Um, so that's all the source code for this. Let's go ahead and check it out real quick in the emulator. Got it installed all the way, or already over here. So let's fire it up. And you can see there's our loading indicators. And we populated all the data in. If I scroll down, you'll see more loading indicators. Um, so what that means is basically that adapter, it doesn't create these rows until we need them. So it doesn't create every single row all at the beginning. It only creates them as they're needed, when you know, when you scroll down. Um, so it, that filled in all of our data for us. We can see we got this nice pretty list here. Um, you can see if we click on one, that on item click listener is going uh, to fire off for us. It's going to open up the browser and take us to the URL for that site we clicked. So here's one of them. This is Arcade, the games version of the Stack Exchange. Um, and you can see, you know, this is the full website right here. We're just inside the browser, so you can do all the stuff you normally do just inside of a browser. Um, so one other thing I want to show you is if we back out of here and open it up again, you can see this time we're not going to have any progress indicators. And that's because of that caching that the universal image loader does. Because that thing's storing those images in the memory cache and the disk cache, it doesn't have to load them the second time. So you don't see those progress indicators and you can show them to the, to the user faster. Um, so that's one of the big benefits of using that universal image loader library is that it handles that caching for you. So once you pull them down once, it will keep a hold of them for a while, and the next time you want to show them, it'll just show them from that local copy that it has and it won't take as long as the first time. So uh, that's it for this tutorial. Hope you guys found this informative. If you did, um, definitely please uh, subscribe to the YouTube channel and uh, check back later because I'll be putting up more of these tutorials as time goes on. So thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful and we'll see you next time.